happy. You can't buy that. He really gets injured. Rarely gets injured. I don't care how fantastic a player is. If he's always getting injured, he cannot play. Look at Paxi. We love him. His mouths are both Jaka technically. He can't say physically because Jaka is always available. Yes, he had, he had an injury this season, but was back and season he had not been injured. But party keeps breaking down, Chen keeps breaking down. But Xhaka is a solid, solid servant for, for the club, regardless of how he has had his indifference with the, with the fans, which I understand. But guess what? Even though we are going to improve our midfield next season, I want us to still keep him. If anything is going out of the door, you cannot just throw any. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome, welcome to Soccer Highway 304. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to do the review to the match that ended a few hours ago. Arsenal 3, Manchester United 1. Again, Arsenal 3, Manchester United 1. It wasn't the best quality of game, but guess what? This is the business end of the season. Results are the most important. Performance should be important, but guess what? That is tertiary, sometimes secondary. Results are primary at this time, right? After losing to Crystal Palace, Brighton, and Southampton, and we look to be down, our Teta Altars were having form, we were trolling our Teta, I was beginning to doubt my faith in our Teta, even though I think we should give him more time. But losing three, come on, don't blame me for me. Having a second thought, we have to always review our position sometimes. We are human beings, we have to be innovative and progressive. So I'll review to like need to stick with him because I can see signs of a manager that can do great things in the future. But I can understand that the quality of the players playing squad is not there at the moment. But losing three, that 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 gave me a real thing. But guess what? We won the two matches. A lot of uh us fans and oppositions will not think we, we could win. Beating Manchester United and Chelsea in one week. That is fantastic. You can argue, oh, this is one of the poorest Manchester United, but that's Manchester United. You can argue Chelsea rotated the score. I don't care. Point on the board. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying F. Points on the board. To make it fantastic and to sweeten the deal this Saturday, Spurs drew. They drew against Brentford. Brentford did the favor. Now the ball is in our court. We need to, this time, not implode. The ball is in our court. Yes, I'm smiling, I'm happy, but top four is not still guaranteed, right? It's not still guaranteed. Arsenal can still hit a snag. But guess what? For today, I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Very, very excited that we are back on the road. Like I said, there was a glimmer of hope. There is not all doom and gloom. I understand the emotionality. And our fans are overreacting uh, that we lost three games in a row. Those are the games we're thinking we could win. Then maybe we could draw against Chelsea, against Manchester United. But guess what? We lost the easier games and won the difficult games. Irony of football. Sometimes, that what you can get from Arsenal sometimes. What you expect them to do easily, they don't do it. Then they take the difficult tax on and they do it. That is Arsenal for you. So let's review the game properly. Uh, I saw the lineup, Tavares at the left back. He had a torrid game. He scored the first goal, but guys, guys, uh, let's calm down, right? I understand Tavares is not Carantini. He's still very young and raw. He will make these mistakes and he will learn and improve from, um, from him. I understand if opposition fans are having a dig, are slandering him, but Arsenal fans, come on, let's not do this to our player. He's, a, he's not an experienced player that we, are, we can say, okay, this guy is a write-off, he's not good enough. You call him a bozo? Come on, he, he had a, an indifferent game. The game was not, he didn't have a very flat game. Yes, he considered a penalty. He's still a young player. Give him some time. Hmm? Let's give him some time. We still won the damn game. Cedric. Cedric has been fantastic. I'll use the word fantastic. Yes. For the past few uh, weeks, when Tomiasa has been out, he's allowed a bad game. Come on. Anytime we had 
a player of us have a bad game. We have a digger team. That's unfair. He has had above average. I would say he has had a good, he had good games prior to this game. Yes, this game was one of, one of, one of the most worst performances in the national share. I agree. But one of the other games, he has been doing well. Come on, cut him some slack. Cut him some slack. Xhaka that a lot of you criticize all the time. Like I said, I have my opinion on Xhaka. I will always maintain. I will always keep Xhaka in the team or in the squad. We can improve on Xhaka, right? But to sell him, I do not subscribe to that because Xhaka has one of the best quality of a player in any team. Availability. You can't buy that. He really gets injured. Rarely gets injured. I don't care how fantastic a player is. If he's always getting injured, he cannot play. Look at Paxi. We love him. His mouths are both Xhaka technically. You can't say physically because Xhaka is always available. Yes, he had, he had an injury this season, but was back and season he had not been injured. But party keeps breaking down. Ten keeps breaking down. But Xhaka is a solid, solid servant for, for the club. Regardless of how he has had indifference with the, with the fans, which I understand. But guess what? Even though we are going to improve our midfield next season, I want us to stay keeping. If an enemy is going out of the door, you cannot just throw an enemy and jack out of the door. And Sambi has shown that he is not ready for the big league at the moment. I'm not saying Sambi will not be a good player in the future, or right, just like Tavares right now, they are not just ready. Jaka in the midfield, Ellen in midfield, fantastic, fantastic performance so for us today. Odega doing his thing. Had a great game. I'll do the player rating at the, almost at the end of the show of this review. Uh, Saka scoring a, a penalty, second penalty in a week. He scored a penalty again. Fantastic uh, display. He had Teles on toast. Saka had Teles on toast. Teles couldn't deal with him. Uh, Martinelli came in. Uh, Smith had a very quiet game, very indifferent game, not too bright, but. It is what it is. And Iketa had a very quiet game. He even missed a good opportunity to make it two. That chance he had, and he smashed it into the head. He should have been calmer and slotted it right at uh, the right hand color lower. He would have scored, but he smashed it into the head. He wasn't offside. But I'm not going to cry over, over that because we still won the game. Manchester United offered a bit of threat, especially when they came back in the second half. Uh, they bothered us a little bit, but we withered the storm. You know Ronaldo lost going against us now. And Gabriel, 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 Gabriel. How did you allow Ronaldo to score that goal? Well, guess what? I'm not going to be on his case because he's still a young defender. Uh, he's not at his peak yet. This is second season at Arsenal. He's one of our best center halves in, 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 in the squad or in, the, in, in, in even the first 11. Let us cut him some slack. I understand some of the fans are getting on his case, which is fair. You can criticize objectively, but let's apply context. He has been he has been a good servant for us this season. So let's not get over, overly critical on him. Yes, that was a poor, poor marking from Gabriel to allow Ronaldo you know, sneak in between him and Tavares and score that goal. But guess what? It is what it is. Like I said, we still won the game. We are back in fort. Let me, let, 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 let's let's confirm certain things because I'm, I'm I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. I'm going to tell you right now. Arsenal has played 33 games, 19 wins, three draws, and 11 losses. Uh, while Manchester has played 34 games, 15 wins, nine draws, and 10 losses. Uh, right now, Arsenal is fourth with 60 points. Spurs are fifth. Played 33 games, 18 wins, four draws, and 11 losses. So we're leading Spurs by two points. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Even though on paper, we have the higher fixtures into the end of the season, and Spurs seem to have the favorable fixture, but nothing is guaranteed. Like I always say, the English Premiership is one of the most competitive leagues in the world. One of the most competitive leagues in the world. You cannot take any game for granted. You can't. Spurs were lucky to escape with a draw. On the balance of the game, Brentford had better chances and should have won that game. But guess what? It happened. They, nicked, they were able to sneak away with a draw. Fair point on them. 
So let's go to the player ratings real quick. The player ratings, let's do the player, player ratings real, real, real quick. Uh, let's start with Ramsdale. Saved us a penalty. I'll give him an eight. Good performance from him. Uh, Cedric Suarez had a Tory time. I'll give me six. Not the best performance. I'll give me six. Ben White, he had a decent performance. I'll give him a seven. Gabriel, I'll give me six. Uh, Halain Ronaldo to sneak in and score that goal. Uh, that was very poor. I'll give Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Magalhães a six. Tavares, I'll give me six. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll take a scratch, scratch that. I'll give me five. Uh, he scored a goal, which is good, but considering that penalty, his hands should not be that high. It should, his hands were, on, were at unnatural position. It should be that high. So I give uh, Tavares a five. El Nene, steady walker, tidy passes, at, athletic, chasing lost courses, marking, very, very, uh, very tenacious. I'll give El Nene a seven. Jaka, I'll give Jaka an eight. Efficient. When we considered uh, the equalizer, when it was 1 1, it was running out of the troops. So it was, it was actually telling players, don't, let's, let's, keep, let's keep pushing. I like that from Jaka. Even though he's not a captain, he was displaying captain uh, material. Even though a lot of Arsenal fans would not agree to that, but he was displaying that to me. Oh, they got good game. I give him a seven. Smithro, very quiet. Uh, he wasn't too bright. Uh, I'll give Smithro a six. Saka scored a penalty, uh, put Teles on toast. I'll give Saka a seven. Uh, Nketia, decent, uh, missed a couple of few chances, wasn't as, uh, as efficient as he was against Chelsea. I'll give it, Nketia a six. Mikel Arteta, I'll give him an eight. Uh, he was on a touchline. Uh, I would say micromanaging the team sometimes. Uh, backing at backing orders a bit animated, especially, especially when the, the referee is going to the monitor to look at to review the VR. He argument it for me, he picked the, the right players and he has learned from his mistake by not playing Jack as a left back and bringing an end to the midfield. So I'll give our uh, Tetan eight. What will you give the players? Leave in the comment section. Uh, if you disagree with my, my review of the match. Or my player ratings. Leave it uh, in the comment section. Please, guys, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Arsenal back and forth. We can do this. I know we can still control the Champions League. It's not set in stone. Arsenal can still lose a few games and we might actually uh, lose the Champions League spot. But our destiny is in our hands. Let's go and do this. Arsenal can still do it. Like I say, guys, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.